Howdy all of you delicious people. I'm here today to review the 1988 movie Berg. So we go through this film and I think a lot of people are to go on and either feel nostalgia uh, for uh, when you're when you are adult and you want to just kind of reflect on those times that you were a kid or uh, we can have of course a number of children who are to see possibly what is the road to be led ahead uh, for this film. So for this movie uh, I have to go on and say probably my grading for this movie probably wouldn't have to go on and be like a positive negative thing. Like this movie is so fun and if people have never seen it before I would say to go on and see it just because it's a fun piece. Regardless of how people could probably say that this movie may not hold up or whichever, like still, like I would say that this movie is still fun. It's a still fun piece. So the the concept behind this movie and I think the main reason for me wanting to go on and talk about another Tom Hanks movie at some point because Castaway was a thing uh, that I reviewed Tom Hanks just has a really amazing like memory and just is to memorize just a bunch of stuff that eventually you wouldn't think that he would have had memorized like I'm sure Tom Hanks still to this day would have would memorize the whole song and dance uh with within this movie that he was to go on and have to do because like Still to this day, whenever they were to go on and ask him about this movie, he goes on and just rattles off that whole song and, and, and dance again. And it's like, man, like, how is it that he remembers all of this? But he also, like, memorizes, like, so many things. Um, it's it's amazing. Like, if you go on and you watch, like, an interview that Tom Hanks is to do, Especially the one where he goes on and he's talking to Dana Carvey and David Spade, uh, where he just talks about all like the Saturday Night Live stuff because they go on uh, a huge rant about that. And then they make fun of him because they say it's like, well, like, yeah, all those like uh, mailman movies that you did. <laughs> Because, like, you've got mail, Castaway, and all those those big movies that he eventually ended up doing. So... So we have Josh in this story. So Josh is to go on and want to figure out some way to win over a girl named Cynthia. Because it seems that Cynthia is going on and finding these men uh, that, oh, he can drive. Oh, he can do this. Oh, he can do that. And so Josh is to want some way to win Cynthia over. And it seems that he is far too short uh, to be able to ride some ride. So Josh decides to go and seek out some uh, machine called Zoltar Speaks. Which actually there is a band, a rock band called Zoltar Speaks. Like big ups to those guys. Uh, <laughs> and I thought that that was so interesting. Uh, because while I was uh, looking up uh, Zoltar Speaks, I ended up finding out that there was a band. Because when you really think about it, like, there's a band name out there for everything. Um, to not have Zoltar Speaks eventually be a band somewhere, um, like, makes a lot of sense. Uh, but anyways, so Josh goes on and is to play uh, with this Zoltar Speaks machine and is to wish to be bigger. Not really realizing what exactly that means because he is not specific enough. When you go on and you are to watch a number of wish fulfillment movies like I have, uh, when you go on and you have to make a wish, you have to be way more specific or eventually this wish will get uh, mis misconstrued or, con or, or uh, will get confused about what exactly this person really wants and then all of a sudden we have of course Josh instead of just becoming a little bit taller instead Josh becomes a 
much more matured man who is not exactly mature. <laughs> so, uh, like, I kind of like that bizarreish like, turn of phrase where it's just like, well, he's, like, he's an adult, but, like, he's, like, a child within. Um, so that's kind of, like, the enjoyment of things. Uh, we also had that one, God, what was it? Um, I can't think of the title of it. But there was that one, like, Bruce Willis movie where Bruce Willis to have, have those kind of, like, those twitches. And, like, all of a sudden his, like, past self, like, uh, is to appear one day. And so Bruce Willis is going on and talking to his past self. And, like, there's a whole movie about that. And, like, I thought that that was so, like, fascinating, a bizarre, like, approach but so, anyways, let's let's move on. So, with that said, this movie, uh, the grading of it just has to be fun. Uh, like, I would have to just give it a positive uh, review anyways. I don't think I could go on and say, like, this big movie, it sucks. <laughs> I don't think I can find, like, a bad thing about it to where just, like, yeah, movie, boo. But if someone weirdly is to go on... And just not like this movie. Like maybe it just like. Yeah it just doesn't make sense anymore. <laughs> like. It's just another body transforming movie. That doesn't exactly hold up. Um, I don't know. But like it's just like. Reminding people about their fun. But one thing before we get into spoilers. Uh, the one thing that is really funny here. So. Josh when he ends up getting his first check for uh for of course doing his job it's kind of funny how josh of course goes on he's like oh my god 180 dollars he's like oh my god like that's the like the most money that he's probably ever seen at one point in time and so it's so interesting when anybody's to go on and probably get their first check and they're like man that's a lot of money but then as the years pass, you go on and be like, no, 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 like, I don't think I'm getting paid enough for this. Like, I like it starts to get to the point where, like, you start to, like, really, like, have to haggle over the, like, over how much you get paid or, or whichever. And it just, like, but then that first check, it's like, man, this is a lot of money. And then you go off onto the night and do whatever you want to do with your check. But anyways, yeah, it's just, like, that... Uh, one scene uh, was just really fun to watch uh, out of this whole movie. So, but yeah, but we also have a bunch of adults who are to technically like rediscover their childhood in this movie, or we just have certain adults also being fairly childish in this film. Um, so it's kind of fun to kind of see all this, uh, all these kind of characters kind of play out in this film. So speaking of playing on, I think without a doubt, it's about that time to just go into spoilers about this movie. Let's double five this bad boy up because it's about that time to just go on into spoiler time. Spoiler time. It's about that time to just spoil this movie. So Josh, of course, is uh, to be this young lad at the very early stages of this film. And so because of how, like, we go on and we have Josh's parents who are to go on um, and have another kid, which is to lead this kid being put into Josh's room. And Josh is like, seriously, like, I have to go on and share my room now with, uh, with my sister or my baby sister. And it's like, yeah, you gotta, like... You gotta really not like that anyways, because when really thinking about it, like, this baby's gonna cry in the middle of the night all the time. <laughs> and so, Josh has to just deal with that. So, it is what it is with this, uh, with this uh, story. So, we have, of course, Josh, who uh, is to have a best friend, Billy, who they go on and they... Uh, they do walkie talkies and they stay well uh, past midnight just talking to one another. So 
so we go on and so Josh is trying to figure out if Cynthia is with anybody and it seems that Cynthia is gonna like to not go with some people and then all of a sudden she finds a guy and so like it's the whole story about that where Josh is just like oh about like Cynthia just kind of like in awe of her so we so we have Josh that goes on and like now we have this whole carnival thing and I don't know if I'm rushing or not through this movie I'm just kind of going through uh the parts of which that all I remember so <laughs> Josh goes through this carnival <clears throat> and is to be with his parents and his younger uh sister so we, of course, go on, and Josh wants to ride one of these rides, and his parents are like, hey, yeah, go on and go. And so Josh all of a sudden is to bump into Cynthia, and Cynthia is asking Josh, is like, oh, like, are you, like, you here by yourself? And Josh is like, yeah, I'm by myself. <laughs> and Cynthia is like, well, isn't your parents over there? And Josh is like, yeah, that's, that's my parents. <laughs> Just at first, he's, like, trying to play really cool, but then he realizes that he's been outed by Cynthia, and then there's nothing he can do. So, Cynthia is with some, uh, some guy who drives, and, like, like, really, if you go on, and it's, like, now, like, uh, the time that it is, like, Uber is now a thing, so, like, a guy who drives, like, just find Uber, <laughs> Just trust in Uber. Like, I know there's been some kind of shady Uber movies or, or whatever. Like, how, like, um, like you might go on and just, uh, you, you might just be a little bit of uh, scared of going on and doing Uber and stuff like that, but still. Anyways, so, uh, so we go on and so Josh is to go into this line and we, of course, have one guy who's like, I'm sorry, kid, but you're, you're, too you're not tall enough to ride this ride you got to be over here to just so josh goes on and is to bizarrely find this genie thing called zoltar speaks and for some odd reason he decides like well hey i'm gonna spend some money to excuse me to uh to see what this thing is so we go on and we have Josh that is to make this wish of like, man, I wish I was bigger. And so the coin goes into the chute and we have the, the card that says your wish is granted. So Josh is to go on realizing that he's never going to get Cynthia. It's never going to happen. And so, but instead, Josh ends up getting later on in the movie, he gets some of that Susan, some of that, mm, some of that Susan, so, <laughs> some of that mm, Susan, uh, so, and plus also, like, he gets the extra added, added benefit of being able to do a number of things that a number of kids his age wouldn't be able to do, or um, there's probably a lot of kids that are probably like, no, I was active via this age, and it's like, good for you. Good for you. Just... <laughs> Just one of these. Mm, you know? <laughs> I was active when I was 11. Yeah, I'm sure you were really active. You, you did a lot of stuff outside. Anyways. <laughs> you, get what, you get what I'm getting at? Anyways. Uh, I bet those Cool Ranch Doritos are really doing the trick. Anyways, pushing on. So Josh is to go home the next day, uh, sleep things off, and so the the next day he is to go on from off of his bunk bed, and he is to clunk clunk with his feet. So he goes in the bathroom. He's trying to like refresh himself, and he's just like, man, like this is just. I'm really tired. So Josh all of a sudden goes in and realizes that he's he's matured. He's Tom Hanks. He's to be this uh, man with, with chest on his hair. 
uh, or hair on his chest, chest on the hair of the head. The, you know what I'm saying? Everywhere, you know, you know what's going on. Here's the thing, though. So, Josh, I don't think yet once in this movie ever grows beard or mustache or anything like that. And so, like, so what does like Josh have the the opportunity to just miss out on <laughs> on having to shave himself? Anyways. I, that, I guess, just doesn't come up conveniently in this film. But so, Josh goes on, and he, of course, is to have his mother just like, Hey, Josh, come down for breakfast. So, Josh is to supposedly bring his younger daughter down, and he ends up putting her in this little thing and, like, kind of sliding her off. And so Josh leaves not knowing what exactly to do here. But then Josh decides to go back into the place and talk to his mother to try to convince her that he is Josh. And everything that he, of course, is to try to do, we have, um, of course, Miss uh, Baskin, who is to kind of misconstrue everything is like, Oh my God, this guy like tried to come into my house and like he kidnapped my son. And then he tried to take his pants off and <laughs> like, it's so, cause like this woman just was not listening to Josh. Like, Hey, I'm like, I'm, I'm like, I'm Josh. I'm like, it's me, ma. <laughs> so we have it to where Josh is consistently trying to convince his mother of what's going on. And she just won't listen. So Josh goes on and is just like scramble and leave out of his house. And so Josh now has to go on and find Billy, who's at school, and convince Billy he is who he is. And so that leads Billy to go on and give Josh like a certain exchange of clothes and is to give him a, a certain, like, uh, emergency fund of money. And so Josh is to go to this St. James Hotel to just kind of, uh, like, wait things out. Because they go on and they try to f uh, go back to this carnival, and the carnival is no longer there. And so the Zoltan, the Zoltar Speaks is no longer there. Uh, Zoltan! <laughs> if you guys ever remember the, the dude where's my car, where they're just like, Zoltan! Like, that's, like, I get Zoltar and Zoltan, like, confused all the time, or even Zordon. It's just, like, Mighty Morphin Power Rangers, like, <laughs> recruiting teenagers with attitudes. Uh, anyways. But, we push on with our lives. So, <laughs> So Josh goes on and he's at this St. James Hotel and Billy is saying like, oh, it's St. James, like it's a religious hotel. And so Josh is to go in there and we have this kind of guy who's kind of lost some some tephus and they're like, OK, like we need a room for rent. It's like, OK, that's going to be 17 bucks. So. Reason, I guess, for this time, fairly fairly cheap, I guess, uh, for this story. So, we go on, and we have Josh, who is to have to go into this uh, apartment, or this, this hotel, and Billy is telling him not to sleep, and, like, he'd be way better off. And so... We, of course, have Josh, who's dealing with the very first night of him being alone uh, by himself at this hotel. And there's a guy who's speaking a language that he doesn't un really understand. And it's a very, like, up-tempo kind of talk here. And so Josh is just kind of freaking out. So he just, like, he puts his, like, uh, his armoire thing or his, like, dresser or whatever, like, in front of this door because he's not really understanding what's going on. As Josh is to go on and hear, like... Uh, shots being fired in, in the neighborhood or anything like that to where in the later part of the film Josh just kind of gets used to somebody either getting shot or a car backfiring uh, in his neighborhood to where he's just going on like yeah yeah <laughs> like and so he just goes on and he is just like watching his tv eating his oreos uh, in the later part of this movie 
and then we go on and we have at some point where uh, Macmillan is eating these Oreos like, hey, it's like uh, good for the both of you, as we'll, we'll see later on in the film. So Josh and Billy are to try to track down this Zoltar Speaks machine. And it seems that they went they go through a number of of gaming uh either gaming stores or just arcades uh to kind of come up with bub kiss so they realize to go and try to track this down and they're gonna have to wait like a month for this so josh in the meantime is to try to like call mrs baskins and tell her that her son's okay or to try to write letters or to just go on and just try somehow to communicate to his parents um, so they'll know that he's he's okay. So Josh goes on and realizes that he's going to be like eventually needing money. So we have Billy and Josh who are looking for work and Josh is like, how am I going to be able to find a job? So they go on and they start looking for work and Josh is really interested in like this computer job because Josh, of course, was to, by the beginning of this movie, go on and play this, uh, this computer game where he is to try to figure out like, uh, what scenarios that he can try to do to try to uh, beat this whole story of this whole dwarf and and, and uh, this dwarf story that he was playing on the computer. So Josh goes on uh, to find this whole job application for this toy store and just like yeah like I can work at a toy store and do computer stuff yeah this sounds great so Josh goes on uh with Billy to fill out this application for this job and they go over and they're kind of looking over the guy uh beside them to see what he wrote so like as if they're kind of like old school like cheating on uh, certain tests and stuff like that in school. So Josh and Billy go on and and uh, the, the, the secretary is telling Josh, like, I'm sorry, sir, but you can't have your son with you. And Josh is like, yeah, my son. <laughs> so uh, Billy runs on, uh, runs along. Josh goes and is to uh put this resume in and this guy's like oh george washington oh i went to that school so we have it where josh is just kind of bullshitting uh to get this job and so he does so while also we have susan coming in on this whole thing uh talking about how she wants somebody fired for like being very distracted at her job because Susan is noticing that this girl has a one-track mind about being married and so all she does all day is kind of just write her name and write it differently for how she wants to think of like how her name is going to be when she gets married. We also have Susan who's dealing with another uh, woman who is to be having this kind of like baby shower kind of thing in... Um, in the workplace and so Susan at some point is to kind of reflect on this girl who's uh, like going through this whole baby shower thing right here at work and then Susan later on once it seems that her and Josh's relationship are, is working out Susan then like chucks this whole like uh, like this whole basket of goodies for this woman is like oh hey here you go so I thought that that was so funny where it's just like, well, yeah, I guess Susan has really like changed um, once she has kind of gotten something from Josh, I guess. Uh, but we'll we'll get to that. So Josh starts working at this uh, at this place, working alongside with a guy named 
Scotty uh, Brennan, who we actually know as John Lovitz. And of course, Lovitz, a lot of us will uh, know him from like Saturday Night Live. Like that's the ticket and uh, doing the critic and stuff like that. And uh, just a cluster of just amazing stuff that this guy has gone and done. But in this movie, he is to go on and uh, tell Scotch is like, hey, man, like slow down. You're making us look bad. So Josh at one point is to uh, eventually get his first check, which is $180. And they're like, oh, $180. And so we go on and have this character who is to go to this bank and try to cash this check. And they're like, well, how much do you want? And he's like, well, hmm, I don't know. So he goes on with Billy to try to figure it out. And so they want one $100 bill. And then they want $87 like, dollars all in ones. And, and so, yeah, so we go on with that story. So Josh is, at some point, here's where like his career starts to change. So... Josh, all of a sudden, at one point, is to slam into uh, McMillan as McMillan is kind of walking along with both Susan and Paul as both Susan and Paul are kind of uh, realizing that things are going so well in this company that it seems that there's not uh, something they can do that could like really like benefit them. Uh, to win over their boss. So Josh goes and he slams right into McMillan, like having him fall over. And so Josh is like, oh, I'm, I'm sorry, sir. Like all these guys wanted all these things copied by five o'clock. And I just wanted to like, I wanted to rush. And McMillan's like, well, hey, like, it's OK. Like everybody got knocked on his on their butt uh, every once in a while. So like, hey, like good effort kid like it, i'm okay with that and so like uh, some real hustle and then he turns to paul and was like when's the last time you ever hustled <laughs> and paul's like i hustle <laughs> so, uh, yeah um so we go on and so josh is uh eventually going to this toy store and he is to just kind of play around with all these toys because, of course, he has this check. And so he starts playing around with his kid with uh, playing this like laser tag. And so he just starts talking to this kid and we have them just kind of messing around. And so eventually when the kid ends up like uh, laser tagging Josh, he falls over and McMillan's like, you work for me, right? And Josh is like, yes, I do, sir. And he's like, oh, okay. So, <laughs> and it just feels like McMillan is really just uh, seeing this one of a kind guy that's just having a lot of fun who's taking a zebra and just kind of uh, like prancing around as if it's a real horse. And so McMillan is just going on to this store and just wanting to see like somebody stick out and Josh does. So we go on, we have McMillan and Josh. And so... McMillan starts going on and wanting to see like Josh's opinion about certain uh, about certain items about certain toys and so McMillan is like well hey you ever played those like those hockey games before and Josh is like well yeah but, like the pieces don't move and so he's like oh okay all right so Josh just starts to go on and just uh, is to just kind of have his opinion about like every little toy, like having us like believe that Josh has gone on, played every single one of these. So we have McMillan who's like really taking all this stuff into like consideration of what Josh is all saying. And all of a sudden, like uh, McMillan is trying to like, like change the direction of where they're walking and all of a sudden, Josh is to bump into these this piano keys. And he's like, hey, like, this is fun. So he just, like, tosses his bag aside and is to all of a sudden start playing with this big, big massive piano. And 
we have Josh, who, of course, to have a number of years like playing piano. Because, of course, we have Josh, who is to call his uh, his mother and have to tell her about the, the, the memory song. Um, so that way she'll believe that Josh is still alive and that he'll be home soon. So Josh is to go on and start... Uh, playing this song and Macmillan can't help but like chime in because he's had some piano practice also and so they go on and play this song and then they change and they shift to chopsticks and I'm like man like just imagine like the probably like the practice that these guys had to go through to eventually just kind of nail all of this so we have Josh and we have McMillan doing this duet together, this whole Chopsticks duet. And we just have Josh and McMillan just having, like, the funnest time. And everybody's like, yeah, like, that was so cool of what they both did together. So we now have Josh, who is to be pushed immediately to be the vice president of... Uh, like toy analysis or something like that, like toy uh, production. And to really just have Josh, who all he really has to go on to do is to like go in and play with all these toys and give them his opinion about it. And so Billy is to find out what Josh does. And he's like, seriously? Like, man, did they get, like, hosed? <laughs> like, man, like, uh, like they really had, like, they gave a kid, like, the, the, the toy store and just let him play. So Josh goes on and is to go into this meeting and... Like, uh, McMillan is talking about, like, marketing reports and all this kind of stuff. Josh doesn't even understand what any of that is. And so when we get into this meeting, we now have this meeting about these buildings that become robots. And so, like, Paul is doing this whole uh, laser point presentation about this whole toy thing. And Josh kind of like is like, I don't get it. And so Paul's like, well, what don't you get? He's like, well, I, I just don't get like how like a building could become a robot. It just doesn't make sense. And so Paul is just like, well, like you can see via this paperwork that like the, the buildings that change into robots do sell really well. And Josh is like, but still, I don't get it. So, Josh is to break down the whole fact that, like, buildings turning into toys just doesn't make sense. It's not, like, cosmetically pleasing, uh, is how I would say it. And so, Josh, of course, is to mention, it's like, well, why can't this just transform into a bug? Like, why can't a robot just change into a bug? And I'm like, oh my god, a robot that changes into a bug? Wow, this is... <laughs> This is some cutting edge stuff. This is some pioneer sh going on right now. So everybody's like high fiving. They're like, yeah, like this Josh guy. Wow, like what a concept. And every single thing that Josh brings to the table, they're like, wow, like what an idea. <laughs> As if this guy is like discover the holy grail of just toys. And they're just like, wow, <laughs> mind blown. <laughs> Because they, they talk about, like, Transformers, and you would have thought, like, everything for Transformers would have probably been done probably by that time already, but still. Uh, so, all of a sudden, we have it where, like, Josh is doing so well that he's getting this, like, this bigger, uh, this bigger apartment, and he's having to go on to this uh he's going on to this uh kind of uh party that everyone is kind of throwing so 
Josh has to now figure out like what he's going to wear to this whole ordeal. And so we have Josh going to this tailor and this tailor is like, well, hey, sir, like you should go and look into this tuxedo and you should look into this. And instead, Josh is just trying to find something that completely like stands out and is very unique and one of a kind. So the more and more like we have like Josh trying to find this like unique uh, suit. And so as Susan and McMillan and Paul and everybody are coming to this party, we, of course, have Susan talking to McMillan, but like, well, hey, nice suit. And McMillan is like, well, yeah, I think my suit looks like everyone else's. And so Susan is to go on and talk to him about some uh, some kind of uh, uh, line that's coming out. And McMillan is like, you know what? How about you just have a drink? Just, like, have fun. Because McMillan is getting asked by everybody, like, either about a raise or something here, like, as if he's the godfather and he needs to go on and, like, okay, I'll, I'll be able to give you the next thing that you that you would like, but uh, you have to uh, you have to do me a favor in return and it'll be one day and I'll come for you. <laughs> I have to kind of technically reference the godfather with the scene because technically it makes sense, but also... And you've got mail. We also have uh, Tom Hanks, who in his character in that movie is to reference the Godfather and is to mention about the like leave the gun, take the cannoli, and uh, Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, and whatever uh, within that movie. I don't know how I can remember half of the stuff that I remember at some points, but there's a lot of other stuff that I forget about probably whatever is to be reviewed within this film so we have josh that comes into this suit and or comes in with this suit that stands out because it's this very white and like gold flaking like uh like tuxedo and everybody's like whoa like this guy like this guy's an oddball so everybody's laughing and everybody's going on of like god what a like what a ridiculous goof and mcmillan is like wow that is quite a tuxedo there john and so like mcmillan like nothing josh can do could be wrong uh, it's just impossible so all of a sudden we have susan just starting to realize that mcmillan is to really just have like a really like a really good time with Josh and so Susan was like well maybe I can have a fun time with Josh also so Susan starts to go on and approach Josh because it seems like he is to be like this really uh like he's he's working himself up in the world uh to where like everybody's just in awe about this guy so Susan's like, well, I got to see what everybody's, uh, what everybody's talking about now. So Susan's going on and is to see Josh just kind of, just kind of eating these little, um, these little like spread of things. And so, uh, at some point I think Susan is to mention to Josh about this like beluga caviar. And so Josh eats it and he's like, <laughs> like bah! And he takes his napkin and so uh not to mention we also had the one scene where like uh josh was also going on and having this sunday and he was doing like hey let me have this cherry and he was playing around with it so like that's when they were trying to figure out what jobs uh josh was to try to do so Josh goes on and he's like, man, like, can I have a milkshake? Like, like, I don't, I don't want any of this food. Get, like, let me just go on and just have like a milkshake somewhere. So both Josh and Susan leave to go and get like a milkshake and fries, which of course, like doesn't have a, like uh, a logo or anything like on it or anything like that on it. It's just like these generic items that they are to just to get. So josh and susan leave in this limo and josh is like wow this limo as josh is going on fiddling with every single like every single light 
and every single button and is to go on and have like the 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 window the window roof whatever it's called the 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 roof thing uh the roof window he ends up like removing it and like pops out he's like hey come up here let's have some fun and so as well as josh is like messing with the radio and like it was kind of funny because susan was to go on and have josh play with the radio and susan's like you know what can you not mess with the radio and come and turn around we have susan who goes on and then messes with the radio and paul's like hey don't mess with the radio like i like this station and like it's just kind of funny how like susan's like mm, like i can get under his skin that way so after uh they eat their fries and they have their shake and, and whatever we of course have susan and josh that go back to josh's place and there's a whole idea about there possibly being just like this sleepover and <laughs> isn't it kind of interesting how like when you're a kid you can go on and just have a number of people like just kind of like sleep over and, and whatever and but once you kind of get a lot older like that whole thing just kind of goes away where it's like yeah that seems kind of a weird uh like age thing when eventually it's like, oh, well, I don't know if this person should, should be over here and whatever. It's just like, you've known this person all your life and whatever, but still. Um, like, it's kind of funny when you get much older how, like, doing sleepovers is just kind of like this old-fashioned thing that you, that you don't do anymore. Like, uh, doing forts and, and whatever, just having fun for a day. So, Josh and Susan are to go on and play on this trampoline. Uh, Josh is to get this like Pepsi uh, getting out of this vending machine and so Susan is immediately thinking that she's gonna eventually get some something with Josh and instead like Josh just goes on and is to just be like a kid who doesn't go on and like puts the moves on Susan and is to instead just kind of have fun with her and then susan is just kind of baffled and confused so she's like what the heck just happened here <laughs> like as she's going on in this this bunk bed and josh and susan go on and they fall asleep as josh is to give like susan this uh this compass glow in the dark ring so she'll figure out where uh, she has to go on and, and get out of, she has to go to the bathroom or something in the middle of the night. She'll have this compass ring. So Susan is just kind of baffled and confused. But then she turns around and realizes how much fun she had. So Susan is to go on and continue to be with Josh. And Paul is starting to realize like, ah, like, so like, it seems like you're going after this guy. To the point where Susan is to eventually just stop going with Paul altogether and just saying, like, you know what, like, I think we're breaking up. Like, here's all your shit. Like, here's all your, I'm sorry, here's all your stuff. My bad. Uh, so Paul is to go on and then realize uh like wow like everybody just weirdly likes this guy and so paul at one point is to go on with josh to play this like racquetball game or squash game or something and so at one point like here's like the funniest thing like we have both josh and paul playing this game and we have it where paul is consistently childish against josh where like when he has to come up with the bug thing like paul's like oh my god he <laughs> like he just comes into a meeting and, and just throws out the word bug and people just jump on it oh my god and so the further and further paul is just descending into madness because of how josh is to just be so good at his job to where like paul can just no longer compete so he just decides like well like i'm just gonna play around with this yo-yo because what else can i do <laughs> Like, I'm just spinning my wheels here. So, Paul plays squash or some kind of, like, a game with Josh. And so, 
at one point Paul is to lay out the rules and so when Josh is playing with Paul it seems that Josh is to neglect the rule when it like doesn't work out in his favor and so both Josh and Paul start wrestling over this Paul because it's uh, Josh's turn to serve and Paul's like no like I like I didn't go over the line and so they start wrestling one another and so josh is to be with susan and like licking his wounds and stuff like that and saying that like hey like paul was like playing the game wrong so we go on and we have josh and susan's relationship the keys that keeps uh going on and we have a one point where Susan is to ask, like, hey, like, where are we going with this relationship? Uh, like, is this just an affair or what is this? Because uh, at some point we do have Josh eventually sleeping with Susan. But it still feels like this relationship where they're just kind of having fun. And, like, Susan wants to put a label on this. She wants to find this because she's like, well, like, what is this exactly? <laughs> Because, like, I guess Susan has never really had just a relationship where she could just have fun. And so, like, considering this is new to her with this relationship with Josh, she doesn't understand it. So, we go on into this story. And so, once Susan is to be with Josh, she decides that she wants to have Josh possibly pitch a like a toy line considering Josh probably has like so many good ideas like why not just have Josh go on and like just pitch something and so because Susan wants to also like tie herself onto this project so that way she can have like her ideas just be like kind of used here so Josh is like, mm, I don't know, like, I uh, yeah. So we have a one point where Josh is to, I think, I think there was one point where I probably, did I, did I not mention about uh, Josh first seeing Billy and doing the whole shimmy shimmy combo cup, shimmy shimmy copo pup? Shimmy shimmy ma, like whatever the whatever the the weird, goofy song and dance was to convince him. If not, because uh, Billy was playing basketball, and like uh, Billy was trying to shoot the last shot to win the game, and he couldn't like he couldn't make the shot, but he consistently kept getting the ball, and so after the class is over, everybody just kept pelting him with all these balls. And then Josh comes in. It's like, hey, shimmy, shimmy, couple, shimmy, shimmy. <laughs> I had a girlfriend, uh, a Triscuit. He needed a biscuit, a biscuit. <laughs> shimmy, shimmy, couple. All the weird, goofy things that Josh eventually has to say in this in this movie. But anyways, uh, so, uh, so I wanted to get that all out of the way. Oddly here, so. <laughs> To come back to it, to be like, did I say that or not? Anyways, so Josh goes on and at some point it's to tell Susan that he's a 13-year-old kid. To have Josh realize that maybe he wants to go on and be back with his family, that he's homesick. That he just kind of misses like being a kid again and because Josh goes on is just to see a number of high schools or just see a number of schools and just kind of see people kind of grow up uh, all while Josh is to like still be like just kind of watching on as his friends are to go on and like just live a life that he just no longer is able to have so we have Josh that is to finally convince or try to eventually tell Susan that he's a 13-year-old boy and that one time he tried to wish 
that he was older, and so this all happened. So Susan at first is just kind of like, well, I get it. Like there are some people that just kind of uh, like have this this problem with like uh, like growing up and and everything like that. And so Susan is thinking the reason why Josh is saying that he's like a thirteen year old child is possibly because he has commitment issues with their relationship. And he's like, no, that's not it at all. Like, so we go on and the more and more that Josh starts to hang around with Susan, we start to realize that Susan is to pick up on things that when Susan is to ask Josh for like, hey, can you give me some bubble gum? He ends up getting her like bubblicious or something like that. And she's like, hmm, like, normally when you would get older, you would have, like, these certain brands, and you would go on and, and choose these certain things. So, but Josh just doesn't. So Susan is like, hmm, maybe he is telling me the truth. Maybe there is a reason why he's so perfect at this job. So Josh is to come up with this idea about this comic book that is to change its story uh so it's to be this like 19 dollar comic book thing where you can go and change the story and get these kind of different kind of packs uh kind of like a leapfrog or uh kind of like a uh any of that stuff that would probably be like done for like kids uh that i think eventually got discontinued at some point just because eventually Leapfrog and all those other like kind of things just kind of went belly up. So, because uh, I remember, because I remember working at a store when they had all those like CNCs and like Leapfrogs and all this kind of stuff and eventually it discontinued because no one was really buying it. And I think Leapfrog was just a temporary thing that wasn't made to last. So, we go on and so they're now pitching this whole like comic book story thing and they're like oh my god like this seems to be like a really interesting thing because josh was to reflect on his like game that he was playing on this disc and so that made him think of this whole idea so josh goes on and during this meeting is to realize like oh my god like i want to be a kid again and so Josh is to leave this meeting. Susan is to leave after him. And so because both Josh and Susan were working so hard in this meeting and McMillan was like, hey, you guys, like uh, burning midnight oil, trying to figure out this story or trying to figure out this pitch. And so McMillan is saying like for Susan that she's like, and it seems like she's never looked happier. So. And she's just happy for both Josh and Susan that they've, like, both found somebody to make them happy. So, we have Susan who leaves the meeting after Josh is to leave this meeting. <laughs> and now I guess it's like, oh, okay, I, I, I guess this meeting's over. So, Josh runs off uh, to, of course, uh, find the Zoltar Speaks Sheen, or thing because Billy at some point was to give Josh like hey here's exactly where this thing is go and find it because of course Billy was trying to track down where this whole thing was because at some point Billy was trying to get uh to speak with Josh again and it seems that Josh was like too busy doing his job and so Billy finds where this where the Zoltar speaks thing is and is to give Josh the address so Josh follows the address and Billy is to realize that Josh is following the address and he's like yeah like he's gonna go on and do it and so Susan is to find Billy and Susan's like oh yeah I've seen this kid before so we go on we have Susan who's talking to Billy and it's like well hey like where exactly is this kid going where, where exactly is Josh going so and Billy is asking Susan, and it's like, well, hey, who are you? And Susan's like, well, I'm his, his girlfriend. <laughs> so Billy's like, ooh. So, and, and Susan's like, yeah, this is awkward. So we have 
Josh, who goes on to uh, find that Zoltan speaks, uh, is to go on and wish that he was uh, a kid again. And so Susan is to track him down and realize that, like, oh, so you've already made this wish. You've already decided what you're going to do. And so Susan's like, well, like, like, I guess, like, like, how old are you really? It's, and he's like 13. He's like, well, maybe in another 10 years, like, maybe you should, uh, like, keep my phone number and stuff like that. It's like, yeah, just have, like, this girl who's just kind of lighting this, like, who's just kind of going on and just keeping this torch for, for Josh. Uh, and it'll be interesting to see where Josh, within the next X amount of years, eventually, w what happens to him. Maybe he ends up going on and, and being this, uh, this vice president of some company like he was X amount of days before. So... We go on, and so Josh is thinking, it's so cool, hey, how about Susan, how about you just go on, and you just become, like, my age again, and just go through all of this, and Susan's like, no, I don't think I can go through all of that again, and so Josh eventually is to just realize, it's like, well, like, this is, this is what I have to do, so Josh goes on and he starts walking back home and all of a sudden we start to see that Josh is to now like go from Tom Hanks to now younger Josh and so Susan is to just to like realize it's like well like I guess I lost somebody there or I lost the love of my life so Josh is to run back home after uh, I think at some points going on and playing around with Billy and so Josh goes on and is to make his way back home and we even had the one point where Mrs. Baskins and Billy were having this like walkie-talkie moment where Miss Baskins was uh, to show Billy this uh this present she was going to give Josh that was some like Pete Rose card and could you also just imagine if Billy could go on and like keep all the money that he had from that job and also to like keep uh, all the stuff that he bought from that other apartment and all of that stuff, <laughs> that would be hilarious. Uh, if Billy finally had to convince his parents, it's like, hey, yeah, like, I wasn't, uh, I wasn't kidnapped the whole time. Here's what happened. And they believe the whole story. And so they end up, like, going on and, like, Billy is to, or, so Josh is to show them, like, hey, this is the place that I lived at. And so on and so forth. And just, like, wow. <laughs> that would be, that would, that would be the one, like, interesting way for that story to just end with, with Josh finally convincing his, uh, his family that is like no like uh i lived here this whole time and i was this vice president of this company and like here's this uh apartment that i lived in it's this really lavish apartment and they'll be like wow so yeah so with that said i think i'm just gonna get out of here so i can go on and do uh, another review for today so with that said i think i'm just gonna get out of here hopefully i covered most of this movie if not then at the end of the day oh well uh, cause eventually I'll go on and review something else for the day. So with that said, I think I'm just going to get out of here. So bye everybody. Bye everybody.